The Western world is already cutting off much of its business relationships in Russia. This morning, Ukraine's president asked Congress to go further and end all imports coming out of Russia to stop funding of Putin's war machine. But something to think about is all of the wheat and the grain that the world depends on from Europe. Russia and Ukraine make up nearly 30 percent of the world's wheat production. Yes, Ukraine has ended all grain exports to feed its own people. And Russia has reduced exports to at least uh, several of these Eastern European countries for now. Well, for more, we'd like to welcome agricultural economist and author of Food Fear, How Fear is Ruining Your Dinner and Why You Should Celebrate Eating, Damien Mason. Damien, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Jen. Thanks, Mary. Thanks for having me here. So, well, glad to have you. As Zelensky said, you know, buying Russian goods is funding Putin's war. You know, inflation has already caused wheat futures to go up well before the war. If the world ends up uh, importing wheat from Russia, what will that do to, to grain prices here in the U.S.? What is the impact here at home as well as Americans deal with record inflation, uh, particularly at the grocery store? Well, first off, we're going to have to realize that Russia already said they are going to not do any exports till June 30th, and they are a huge exporter of particularly wheat. And so with 35 percent of exports coming out of Ukraine and Russia, obviously Ukraine can't do anything right now. They can barely you know, keep their people safe. And you've got Russia that's a huge exporter. They are hoarding their wheat supply right now. Doesn't harm us in the United States so much because we have our own domestic supply. However, when you take that that much off of the global marketplace, it's going to tremendously cause uh, price spikes. Middle East and China are going to suffer a lot from this because China gets a lot of their corn. Not only do they produce their own, but they need so much for 1.4 billion people. They're going to need those Ukrainian exports. That's not happening. So we're driving a lot of fear in the marketplace about futures. And it's going to also cause problems because even though we have our own domestic supply, when it's a global marketplace, price squeezes in another part of the world do impact us and the American consumer that goes to the grocery store. So let me ask you, some countries who rely on just Ukraine uh, to get their wheat, for example, they're going to be facing drastic food shortages, as you mentioned, as early as July. Is it at all possible for the United States to increase our own wheat production to backfill those needs? Generally not, because most of the wheat production in the United States of America was planted in the fall. We call it winter wheat. So we got about 34 million acres of wheat in the United States of America this year, and we are really good at producing it. The problem is you can't, we could do some spring planted wheat, but it'd probably be a very paltry amount of supply compared to what's already in the ground that will be harvested starting in late May in places like Texas and working its way through the plains. So can we up our supply? Yes, but can we do it in the next couple of months? No, because unfortunately, the bulk of our wheat production is planted in the fall to be harvested starting in May through July in the United States of America. Uh, Damien, the Fed today approved its first rate hike in three years. They indicated uh, there could be six more increases over the next year and a half. What are your thoughts? Well, this is going to put a squeeze on the American consumer because we're already being squeezed. The Federal Reserve, you know, tried to tell us that uh, inflation was transitory, which of course means we're being lied to because transitory is a word that means temporary. Well, uh, everything's temporary. You know, uh, cancer's temporary until it kills you. And I guess that I would say, how long is transitory supposed to last? What we're doing now by bumping interest rates, the consumer that's going to be paying more for credit card debt or for a new home purchase is going to feel the squeeze of interest rates inflation while they're also feeling the squeeze when they go to the grocery store. Saying that inflation is only 7.9 percent, tell that to the gas prices, which are about double from 14 months ago. Tell that to your insurance prices, which are more for your homeowners. Tell that to buying a new or used car. Tell that to just about anything that the average American consumer spends money on. Anything that's going to cost more. You know, one stat that I read says that inflation is now $296 more cost per month per American household. Well, throw more interest cost on that for somebody that has borrowed money. So it's going to be more of a squeeze and things are getting a little skinny at the American household. Right. Yeah. Uh, 15 seconds here. What does this inflation mean to American farmers? The American farmer is producing, you know, more than we've ever done per 
per natural resource expended per calorie consumed. That's a good thing. So we're feeling the squeeze when we uh, buy our inputs, things like fertilizer, because Russia is a major exporter of fertilizer, is going to cost more. So it's going to be more of a squeeze. The good thing is we have commodity prices are going to help that because they're selling their commodity prices, uh, cr crops for a lot more money now. Okay, great. Well, Damian Mason, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Mercedes.